Hello folks, this is Harley Tuck with MI Squared back with the second CDR video. We're talking about creating a CDR. This video is a bit longer than usual because making a CDR is a fairly complex process and I'm taking it kind of slow. I will make the same CDR as I did in the second article in the wiki's supplementary topics section so you can use that as a written reference. Or you can always just keep rewinding the video to see the same section again. This CDR is comparatively simple, but it shows what you need to know to make more complex ones. We start this project by making sure the CDR related options in globals are turned on. So that would be administration globals, the CDR tab. Everything above this patient reminder widget needs to be turned on. And if you made any changes, scroll down and hit save. Okay, now let's take a look at how you make one. Our rule can be stated as this. For every patient 10 years old or older, we will do an annual wellness check every year. Okay, now keep that in mind. Let's navigate to admin rules. This is a list of our current rules. Click add new, and I'll explain these options as we go. A new rule starts with an empty summary screen. The title is the name of the CDR as it will be listed in the rules screen, and that's going to be annual wellness check. Select the alert type. Active alerts generate a pop-up every time the patient's record is open, but they do not appear in the patient's clinical reminder widget. Passive alerts have no pop-up. They just sit in the clinical reminder widget. The only way to mark a CDR as complete is through its clinical reminder widget entry. Therefore, if you want a CDR that has a pop-up alert and also can be marked complete, it needs to be both active and passive. Now we're going to see mentions of patient reminders throughout this project here and mostly we just leave them alone because that's a whole different creature that we're not dealing with in this tutorial. These items, developer, funding source, release number, uh, those are MU2 requirements which will be recorded in the project management documentation of the CDR and your IT people should know if it's been uh, kept track of. This web reference is the web address or URL of the authoritative clinical guideline that recommends the procedures carried out in this CDR. Now these are all meaningful use requirements but they have no functional effect on the CDR if you leave them out. In other words it'll still work. Now I just happen to have a web reference handy and these are pretty cool because you they, they give you a link to a site that you can print out information for the patients when they ask you about what you're doing. Okay, click Save. Next section is the reminder intervals. Set the desired time periods. Can be any number of weeks or months. We want to get a message <coughs> that the uh, procedure is due for one week and have it show that it's past due for two months. Okay now this patient items here that's for those patient reminders uh, we're not doing the rest of the patient reminder stuff but we have to put something in here in order to progress to the next module or the next rule. Okay put something in there and hit save. Now here's what we've filled out so far in our CDR is the summary with all this stuff here and the reminder intervals. The next one is demographics filter criteria which are the characteristics of the patient that will trigger this CDR. We can have multiple filter characteristics all combining to select the desired demographic. Any of these criteria can be specified and set and any patient that, that uh, 
meets with all of the criteria will trigger the CDR. These ones up at top, the age minimum, age maximum, sex, those are real easy. You just click on here and you enter your, your value, which in our case we want the minimum age to be 10, like we said, 10 for, uh, to specify the units and optional and inclusion. Now I've got to say about the optional and inclusion radio buttons. For some reason Open EMR reverses the optional yes and no. So if something is not optional, in other words it is required, select yes, which ours is. If it is optional or not required, select no. For inclusion, that means if this factor is to be included or to be present, select yes. If it is not to be present, select no. Hit save. So let's go back and look at these other demographics filters, which we're not going to use, so I'm just going to show them to you, not, not fill them out. Um, medical issue, medication, allergy, surgery, with all these things here, you just type in the text, like for a medication, type in the name of the medication, okay? And, and the CDR will do a text search in the lists of the medication or the issue or the allergy or whatever, and match whatever is in there with your criteria. And this will look in the list for these issues for all patients. For the diagnosis filter, <clears throat> excuse me, click in the text area, and this isn't just diagnosis. This is for any or all of the code sets that you've got activated in your system. And you make a search for the code. Okay. The lifestyle filter. You can select any of the fields in the lifestyle section of the patient information um, and have it search for either, you know, be triggered by anything in the alcohol lifestyle section or match some specific value that you enter here. Custom table. I would recommend that only people who are familiar with OpenEMR's MySQL database use this filter because you have to know the name of the table and you can take any table in the in the whole OpenEMR database, any of them, and then in that table you can specify a column and then select the relationship of your value to the contents of that column and then say how frequently it's got to occur. Okay, again this really is only for people who know about databases. And finally the custom filter And a custom rule has two components, the category and the item. Let's take a brief look at what each has in it. For the category, oh, notice that you've got to click the little change thing under each of them to change this to a drop down and see what's in there. The category is the type of activity that's used in the CDR. An assessment, an educational incident, a measurement, a reminder, anything like this. The item is the specific activity, the name of the activity. It's an appointment, it's a colon cancer screening, it's a pap smear, okay, a specific name of an activity that will be used in the CDR. Now, completed is, yes, it has to be completed in order to stop the CDR from triggering. And the frequency is, how many times should it be present or should it occur? 
Um, usually greater than or equal to 1 works real well. Now here we have a situation that might be confusing. Some of these demographics filters, the uh, well and specifically the custom one, because we'll get into that in a second, some of these things are also used in a different way in the next section, the target action groups. The trick to keep them straight is to remember what you're using the criteria for. In this demographics filter, you're identifying which factors trigger the CDR. In the target action section, you're talking about which activities complete the CDR. Okay, so, so saying, let's take a look at the target action groups. The clinical targets are these three tables, which are the same ones, not tables, but these three filters, which are the same as were used in the demographics. But, um, for example, the lifestyle data, you can fulfill an alcohol treatment goal by having a specific entry in the alcohol field, lifestyle data field, or just have anything in the alcohol lifestyle data field. And it would probably be helpful to study the other already made rules to understand this better. Okay, the actions portion here are what will be done to reach that clinical target. Okay, and these are also noted by the category and item. So the category of the action to reach this clinical target will be an assessment or an examination, and the specific item will be one of these activities. Okay, we've seen in the custom filter that the category list, the type of action, has the assessment category, and we're going to use that, but the item does not have the specific task, which is annual wellness check. So we need to add that as a custom item. So to do that, we go to administration, lists, and we locate the list called action item. Now you can add an action category if you want. You would use this list right here, the clinical rule action category, and you would do the same thing as we're doing with the action item. Okay, so here's the action item. Make note of the column headings because we're going to be down at the bottom where we can't see these. The ID is the first, title, order, and the active checkbox column. Now. First off, enter the ID, the first column, which there aren't really any naming conventions that need to be observed, but it would be good to have it at least resemble the others. Okay. Enter the title, which is going to be Annual Wellness Check. And for the order, you just do one bigger than the previous item, which let's just for the fun of it do 170 here. Now, be sure and check this green checkbox in the active column, because if you don't, your item is not going to show up. Click Save. OK, now we've made our custom action item. Let's go back to the rule detail screen. Administration, rules, there's our wellness check. And uh, under clinical targets, we're going to select the custom one. Select the category is going to be that assessment. And for the item, it's going to be our annual wellness check. There it is. Now, completed 
Does it need to be marked as completed in order to cancel this CDR? Yes, it does. Frequency is how often, how frequently can it be completed? Well, greater than or equal to one. Let's just put that because you can do it more than once if you want. If you want. Optional, yes, you know. Inclusion, yes. Interval is one year. It's an annual assessment. Save that. Okay, go back to the actions. And remember, click change. Do the same thing with the actions as with the target. Annual wellness check. Okay, now this link and message, they don't work right, so don't use them anyway. And they're not actually required. Custom input, since this CDR does not automatically, <coughs> excuse me, record to the database like, like for example, the vital signs CDR would do that. But this one doesn't automatically record to the database, so we do need to provide a place to put custom input to record the completion of the CDR. Unless, of course, you don't want to have any any uh, custom note about the, the nature of the completion. But we do. Hit save. And that's how a custom CDR is created. Now, of course, you're going to want to look at your custom CDR. Go back to your patient finder. Pull up any patient who's over 10 years old. And blammo, there's the assessment annual wellness check active pop-up. Let's close this. And there's the passive reminder assessment annual wellness check. Now, we play with this anymore, and it, that's getting into the realm of the next video, which is using the CDR. So that's it for this one. Catch the next one.